How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is topic 5.1 where we look at Hess's Law. What is Hess's Law? Hang around, find out. Let's go. All right, topic five, volume number five, what is Hess's Law? We look at applications of Hess's Law and then we do some calculations of delta H using delta HF from the last video. So the IB understandings talk about Hess's Law, which is essentially the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. That's the overall enthalpy of a reaction. So Hess's Law was used to determine the enthalpy of a reaction by manipulating thermochemical equations that could be used to come up with the desired reaction pathway. So in a reaction pathway, we might have A plus B that goes to C plus D, and that has a certain delta H. But there's also another alternative part pathway. A plus B could turn into X, and then X could turn into C plus D. And the overall enthalpy would actually be the enthalpy of both of those steps added together. So we can see that A plus B goes to C plus D is the delta H naught. But maybe A plus B is a fundamental step where that would have delta H1. So we could work that out. And then X could tr transform into C plus D, which we would also know the enthalpy of. Now Hess's law says that A plus B goes to C plus D would simply be the addition of those two equations. And what would happen is the intermediate would cancel out. So the overall enthalpy would be the delta H1 plus the delta H2, the sum of the individual steps. So we can use Hess's law to come up with a series of equations and then put them together to work out the overall delta H. So here's a reaction where we have to find the delta H and we're given two equations and we need to use those equations to figure out the overall delta H. Now the best way of doing it is looking at where the reactants and the products are. So CO is on the right hand side of the first equation and O2 is on the left hand side of the second equation. The CO2 is on the right hand side of the second equation. Now what I want to do is manipulate these equations to get those reactants on the correct sides. So the first thing I can do is flip the first equation. I'm going to reverse it. That gives me my CO on the right, the correct side, and that means that I just need to change the delta H. When I reverse a reaction, the delta H becomes the opposite sign. So it's plus 222 kilojoules per mole. So all I've done is reverse that first equation to get the CO to be a reactant. With the second equation, well, my CO2 is actually on the, the correct side. So I can leave that one in the same order, but I need two of them. So what I need to do here is double that second equation to get my number of products correct. So by doubling that reaction, I need to double the delta H. So the delta H here would be double, which ends up being minus 788. Now, if I've done this correctly, you should see that we can do some cancelling out. So we can see that we've got two carbons on both sides, so we can cancel those out, and I can cancel out one of the oxygens on the right-hand side. What's left over should give me the overall equation. So I've got two CO gas plus O2 gas goes to two CO2 gas, which is the correct equation, the equation that I want. Now, to find the delta H, I simply just add in both of the steps. I add them together. So we've got 222 plus 788, which is 566 kilojoules per mole. Don't forget to add those delta H's at the end. So here's a second example where we have NO plus O gas goes to NO2 gas. Now this one's a little bit more complex. We've got three equations to deal with, but we want to apply the same kind of idea. Let's work out where the reactants are. So here we've got a reactant of NO, and then I've also got a reactant of O. So I've gone through and identified the locations of those. Now what I have to do is try and arrange those equations to make sure I get the correct chemical equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to rearrange these so that I can keep my reactants on one side and what I need for the products on the other. So for equation three, I can simply just write that one out in the forward direction. The NO is on the correct side and the NO2 is on the correct side. So I just need one of that reaction. So that's one minus 199. The second one, well, what I have to do is actually I have to flip reaction two around. So I have to reverse it and I have to divide it by two because I only need one of the oxygen radicals. 
So I'm going to rewrite the equation, dividing it by 2, but then I need to remember to divide the delta h by 2 as well. So the delta h was 495, but I've got to flip it so it'll be negative 495, and then I've got to divide it by 2, which is negative 247. Okay, now you can see that we've got some O3s on the left-hand side, and then in my first equation, I've got O3 on the, on the left-hand side as well. So what I've got to do is I've got to flip this reaction around because I have to remove the O3s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to reverse it because I only need to have one O3 as a product. So by dividing everything by 2 and getting the O3 to the other side, which is going to cancel out that O3 in equation number 3, I have to reverse it and divide it by 2. So the same process as before. It becomes positive. I divide the delta H by 2. Now, if I've done this correctly, I should be able to do all the cancelling out to find the overall equation. If you get to this stage and you do do the cancelling and it doesn't equal the original equation, then you've done something wrong and you can go back and redo the process. So by going through and doing the cancelling, you can actually see that, yes, I did get this one right and I've got the equation that I need. To find the delta H, I simply add together all of the stages of the reaction. So I add those together and my delta H ends up being minus 233 kilojoules per mole. Alright, so what are some applications of Hess's law? Well, what we need to use Hess's law for is to find the delta H of a reaction. And this is defined as the enthalpy change of a reaction when it's carried out at standard temperature and pressure, 298K and 100kPa. So if we have a hypothetical reaction where some stoichiometric ratio reacts with A and the stoichiometric ratio with B to form C and D, we can work out the delta H of reaction by simply knowing the delta H of formation of the products and then taking that away from the delta H of formation of the reactants. So the delta H of reaction will be the products take away the reactants. Now if we have more than one reactant or product, what we have to do is multiply them by their stoichiometric coefficients and then add them together. So the delta H of reaction is simply the addition of the delta H of formation of the products multiplied by their coefficients plus the other product that we might have in the reaction. And then we take that away from the delta H, the sum of the delta H of formation of the reactants multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients. So we have to be a little bit careful when we do this calculation. It can get a little bit messy, so make sure you do the setting out correctly. The example will demonstrate this a bit better. So calculate the delta H of reaction for the combustion of butane under standard conditions. Standard conditions tells me that they want me to use 298 Kelvin and 100 kPa. So the first thing we need to do is write a combustion reaction for butane. So butane C4H10, if you didn't know the formula, refer to the data book, plus O2 goes to CO2 plus H2O. Now we've got to go through and balance this, so we'll apply the chod carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and, dub, and then D for double. So I have four carbons, I need five waters, that's going to give me an odd number of oxygens, which in this case will be okay, and then I have my 13 over 2 oxygens. Now the delta H of reaction, well the delta H of reaction will be the sum of the delta H formations of the products plus the sum of the delta H of formation of the reactants. Now what is the delta H of formation of these chemicals? Well we need to refer to the data book to find them. So the delta H of formation of carbon dioxide given in the data book is minus 393. This is all kilojoules per mole. Delta H of formation of butane is minus 126, water is minus 285. But what about oxygen, the delta H of formation of oxygen? Oh yeah, that's an element, so its delta H of formation will be equal to zero. Don't forget about that one. So now if we plug in the numbers, we've got four times carbon dioxide plus five times water. We then take that away from the delta H of formation of the reactants, which in this case will be butane, minus 126, plus zero. So let's just take away 126. Keeping all those numbers in your calculator, doing the addition in one step, we can work out the delta H of reaction of, my, of minus 288 kilojoules per mole. That's not the thermochemical equation. The thermochemical equation wouldn't have halves in it. 
Okay, topic 5.2, Hess's Law, some top tips. Set out the working out, set out the equations. It's the easiest way to see it. Remember to add the enthalpies and remember that the delta HF of elements is zero. Quite a few students will forget that. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.